The singularity is near, but what exactly is the singularity? And how near is near? For Tech Republican ZDNet, my name is Dan Patterson, and we are speaking again today with Dr. Ben Gertzel of SingularityNet. SingularityNet is a blockchain-based artificial intelligence platform, and it's the first of its kind. Uh, ben, thank you for joining us today. There are a lot of problems with artificial intelligence, and in fact, it's, it's almost difficult to say artificial intelligence without qualifying it as big data analysis or machine learning. So uh, first, what is SingularityNet, and, and what are some of the problems with the AI space right now? So it's good. It's good. Good to good to be back and uh, talking to you again. And yeah, the AI space is developing so fast that you know, from one year to the next, there's an in, insane amount of new things happening. We're really living in a in a tremendous time for artificial intelligence. And the way I look at it is, you know, one AI revolution has happened, which is what I think of as a narrow AI revolution. We have a lot of AIs doing a lot of specialized things now, and they're doing many of them very well. They're being extremely helpful to people, and AI is being rolled out in pretty much every branch of industry behind so many software products and at so many different hardware devices. On, on the other hand, there's still some things missing, and the filling in of these gaps is going to bring the next AI revolution. One thing that's missing, as I've been pointing out for a long time, is, is general intelligence, the ability to generalize knowledge from one set of data or one narrow set of experience to a, a fundamentally different domain and different set of problems. Another thing that's missing is coordination of the many different narrow AIs that are that are out there. I mean, each AI sort of lives in, in a world by itself and they don't share knowledge. To combine them together, you know, requires a lot of expertise. And then, of course, another issue, which is not so much a technical issue as a social issue, is that AI, you know, it's overwhelmingly being deployed to solve those problems that that big temp, big tech companies can make a lot of money from, or, or that you know major military just can get a lot of use out of. So there's a lot of other applications that would do good in the world that could benefit from AI that aren't getting that much attention now, just due to the you know the socioeconomic nature of, of the AI industry. So I think the next AI revolution is going to solve these problems. It's going to bring more general intelligence. It's going to coordinate and connect many different special AIs together, and it, it, it's going to enable AI to be applied for, for broader benefit, for a greater diversity of, of beneficial applications. And yeah, that, that brings us to why my colleagues and I have, have launched the SingularityNet project. I mean, we're trying to solve all three of those problems in, in one fell swoop and bring about the, the next AI revolution. So the, the blockchain uh, functions as uh, is often described an open ledger where it is very difficult because of the encryption used to make changes to the blockchain after an event has occurred and because it's open uh, all parties have access to the data and the metadata why is this useful for building a not just uh, artificial general intelligence but a network that could help uh, build AGI it essence of what blockchain gives us here is decentralization. It's the ability to create a decentralized network of AIs in which anyone can post an AI online and then their AI can participate in the, in the decentralized network. And when a user needs AI as a service to go inside their website, their business's software, they can send out a request into this whole decentralized network and find agents that can do the kind of thing that, that they need done. This whole thing can operate without any central controller, but you can still have exchange of economic value and you can still have you know, knowledge of, of who is who and assignment of reputation to certain AIs as being good and others as being not so good. 
So the concept of singularity net is that it's an open market for AIs, but that, that entails a lot of complexity because selling AIs is more complicated than selling, you know, shoes or, or, or stock image files or something. AIs can do a lot of different things. So to have an open market of AIs, you, you need a lot of different interfaces to the, to the AIs and the, the APIs, the programming interfaces to the AIs have to be constantly changing and actually proposed and voted on by the community. And then AIs can outsource work to each other as well as, as to end users out, outside of the network. So then as AIs share data with each other and make requests of each other and fill those requests, you have a network of AIs you know, doing work for external software applications and websites, but also doing work for each other in, in complex patterns. And in this way, the network of AIs sort of connects together to become a sort of, of, of meta AI, like an economy of minds that in some ways is itself a mind. And the beauty of blockchain is you can set this up as a purely decentralized protocol. I mean, think about BitTorrent. Now that's doing something less interesting and powerful, but it's a purely decentralized network, right? And it, Anyone can run a BitTorrent client on their machine. You can run a tracker on the server. And BitTorrent operates with no owner. It's just a bunch of people running BitTorrent software and a protocol for, for connecting the software that, that people are running. And then the thing keeps operating and, and growing. So this is similar to that. But instead of just allowing you to share files, the nodes in the decentralized network are actually running a diversity of, of AI tasks. And instead of doing stuff for free, as BitTorrent is doing, you could have AI agents offering services for free, but I mean, running AI processes takes a bunch of processing power and uses a lot of RAM. So it's necessary for end users to pay agents in, in the network for these, these services. So the, the blockchain deals with decentralized management of the whole network, it deals with security, identity management, reputation, and rating, and it also deals with payment for services using our own custom cryptographic token, the AGI token. So when one AI agent pays another for providing it with some AI service, like answering a question, summarizing a document, recognizing what's in an image, that payment for that AI service occurs using the AGI token, now, when an external user, say some, some business's website, accesses an AI service within the Singularity Net, they could use a payment processing front end to pay, to pay using normal money, like US dollar or Hong Kong dollar or whatever. And then the payment processor will convert that to the AGI token to use, to use internally. The AGI token is the currency of the internal AI economy. So the blockchain gives you a lot of different things, but it lets you it lets you create this whole decentralized AI mind that will just keep on growing, ingesting data and creating and, and, and delivering value, which is uh, sort of the, the way that, that AI should be. AI shouldn't be owned by a few big companies or military organizations. It should be owned by everyone who wants to produce or use AI. And, and that, that uh, democratized access is critical to companies looking to adopt artificial intelligence, but who may not understand uh, how. So I wonder if you could uh, leave us with uh, best practices for getting started with um, using Singularity Net and tapping into the AI, and not just best practices, but how do I make a good decision as a company in terms of what AI agents to use and, and how that will benefit my company? So we're still in the early stages here. We're launching next week the first sort of early beta version of the network, and this version isn't yet that scalable for broad commercial use, but we're launching it mostly for AI developers because we want anyone developing their own AI algorithm, not just to put their code online in, in GitHub for others to download and play with, but to put their code online 
and wrap it in the Singularity Net API so that anyone can find it and use it and their AI can be used by other AIs and, and it can be monetized. So we, we're putting out a simple test network that developers can, can use and then sometime around the middle of 2018, we're gonna have a fully scalable version that can be used for, for AI as a, as, as a service. But we're, we're going to make it extremely easy to use. So l l let's say that a business owner needs, for example, you know, people's faces recognized in, in a video stream that comes from some cameras they have. Th they would go to the user interface and they would say, hey, what AI agents can, you know, recognize faces in video streams? And there's an AI agent that's an interface that will then say, well, you're probably looking for AIs that, uh, that fulfill one of these APIs, like, you know, video analysis API, your face recognition API 3.2. And then, then the user can find agents that fulfill those APIs corresponding to the user's query. And then they can look at, you know, this is a five-star agent. This is a 3.4-star agent. This is the price offered by this agent. This is the price offered by that one. And then... You know, they can either choose a specific agent and just connect it to their, their, their website or their software application, or they can set some constraints and say, well, you know, get the cheapest agent that fulfills this API and has 4.5 stars or, 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 or greater. And then the Singularity Net, rather than say IBM Bluemix or Amazon Web Services, the Singularity Net is connected on the back end of this website or, or, or software application. So, I mean, the idea is it should be easy for any developer who's developing a website or, or a software application to connect SingularityNet APIs on the back end of their, of their application without knowing what the AI does. They just have to know what data is going in and what, what results they, they want to get out. And, we'll be able to support a tremendously larger number of applications than any single provider does. I mean, just like the, the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store have so many apps on them because they're not all made by Google or Apple. There may be a huge population of people. Some of them are quite niche, but, that, but that's okay. The developer can still make a living from the small population of users that, that need that and then of course, the added bonus here is that unlike apps in an app store, here the AI agents can work together and outsource work to each other behind the scenes. So the AI agent that you're paying to say recognize faces in that video, you know, if, if it needs help with something, it can outsource work and recognizing a certain type of, of scene to to some other other AI agent, which. Uh, which has a specialized expertise.